Everybody and welcome to the Mark Goldbridge channel. Uh, the recent Netflix series, um, I think it's entitled The Disappearance of Madeleine McCann. I think a lot of people have watched this and, and it's interesting. The first thing I'm going to say is, look, I've entitled the video Madeleine McCann Parents Innocent with a question mark next to it because I do believe in the fundamentals of uh, innocent until proven guilty. And I do believe that the reason I've done it live is because I want to get into the live comments because... I don't want to pontificate on something like this. I don't want to, uh, you know, expo express my opinion on this without there being some comeback. And that's the brilliance of having the live comments because a lot of you can have your say. Um, and I, I want to. I've taken notes on this. I've taken notes on this. And the and the interesting thing is that, uh, the, what the first thing I'm going to say is this. For all, and I've got family members who are passionately convinced that the parents did it. They share stuff on Facebook and I sort of, my eyes sort of cringe at times, but I think, well, that's their opinion, that's fine. But, and I've got friends who firmly think them did, they did it. Where do I stand on it? Straight away, I'm just gonna say this. I don't know. I don't know. I cannot give you a definitive answer because there is no definitive answer. So the way I work is I would never say the parents are guilty because it's libelous, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong to say they are guilty when you have fuck all evidence. There, there is a reason that we are 12 years later on and they are not in prison for it. Um, and there is a lot when you look at the documentary and you look at the wider picture, there's a lot of people's opinion. And I don't blame those opinions being swayed by the fact that there was a lot of bullshit thrown at them by the Portuguese and the way they handled that case. However, what I have always said is, um, and I will still say this, is that there is something very sinister about what happened to Madeleine McCann. I don't know what it is. You know, I, I don't have the ability to go back in time and find out what it was. But when you take the whole thing together, I don't know who's responsible. Maybe she was kidnapped to order by a rich, wealthy couple. Maybe she was abducted by a sex pest and murdered. Maybe the parents had something to do with it accidentally. Maybe aliens came down and took her. I don't know the answer, but I am convinced that there is something sinister about it because the disappearance is just very, very weird. But there are people out there who are absolutely convinced that the parents did it. And I have to say this, I have to say this because I, I, I take myself away from this for a moment and say that, look, I was in the police for 10 years as a detective. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. Doesn't make my opinion better than anybody's opinion. I don't operate like that. If, you, you know, if you've never done any investigation work in your, in your life, you might still have a mind that can cut through the crap and have a, a very good line of what you think happened. But in this country, in the UK, you are innocent until you are proven guilty. And that is the fundamental of our law. And I totally and utterly agree with it. And you cannot, cannot, well, you should not, start saying somebody's guilty on a hunch. Oh, I just think they did it. I mean, that's the sort of bullshit that got people killed 70, 80 years ago when we used to have capital punishment. I forget his name. He said I'd let him have it. I did. We, we watched the we watched the program when I was at school. Derek somebody, he was hung for a crime he never committed because of hunch and superstition. Uh, you cannot do it. That's why you can't do it. Because what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? What if you have a what if you really believe the McCanns did it right and capital punishments were still around and we hung them and 20 years time she turns up and everyone goes, oh shit, we were wrong. We really thought it was them though. It, it, this is why you can't do that. And this is what sort of frustrates me with my family members and friends who are so passionately posting and tweeting stuff out about it. What if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? And where, most of all, where is your evidence? Now, for me, I'm gonna take some of your comments, but for me, this, this, the only thing I can pin <clears throat> on the parents that, that, that concerns me a little bit is the dog. It's the dog. It's not the DNA. The DNA has been, you know, some people will say, oh, the DNA was tampered with. Well, the, the office they used in Birmingham, I think it used to be at Gooch Street North. I think they've moved it now, the, the Financial Sci uh, Science Services. I used that. I was in Birmingham City Centre. That's where I went. I, that's where I took my DNA for people being break it when I was when I was very young in service. People break it into cars. They'd sometimes leave a little bit of blood. You take it to that office. Robberies. You take it to that office. Right the way up to murders. That office. To say that that office corrupted the DNA is just fanciful. And this is where conspiracy theories lie. But that DNA that they found was not hers. You've got to take it on face value. But what? I what you cannot what you cannot move away from is those dogs were very 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 highly trained dogs and they did bark about 
the one that barked wasn't for DNA. They barked for the smell of a dead body in that flat and in the car that was hired. That's the only thing for me that makes me think, hmm. But you can't put a dog on the stand. A dog is not a credible witness. A dog and that sort of... I believe that the dog smelt something, but you can't convict on that. That's all there is. That is all there is with that. From a police evidence point of view, um, just as a, as a little bit of an insight, people will have a different approach to things, but I used to work as a night detective quite regularly for the West Midlands area, certainly Birmingham City Centre. And sometimes you'd only have one night detective on duty and there's numerous areas. And if there was a stabbing or a murder or anything like that, they'd call the night detective. You wouldn't always have to go out there because it could be on the other side and you might be dealing with something else. But you'd certainly be on the phone to that duty inspector telling them what you wanted on that case. Or more often than not, you would get in your car and you would drive over to that scene. And there was three principles I always had. One your scene, which is your crime scene, you make it as big as you bloody well can. If you want to close off half a city, you close off half a city. I mean, obviously that's never going to happen, but let's just say, in relation to that Madeleine McCann thing, that was, a, that was her room where she was taken from, right? Well, they had people coming in and out of that room all night, 20, 30 people. Right? You're going to destroy evidence for a start. If that's your scene, you don't just close off the apartment, the room, you close off the apartment and you close off all the gateways and all the outside bit as well. And you go big because you can always close it down, but you can never expand it. That's the, that's the thing about a crime scene. You go as big as you can at the start because if you've gone too big, you can close it down. But if you go too small, you can never get back that crime scene because people are going to be walking around on the bit you want to go big on. Second of all is your witnesses. You grab your witnesses while you can and you interview them while they can so that they can't get their story right together. And third and most important of all is evidence. Evidence. Evidence in the area. In the area. Evidence that isn't witnesses. So your CCTV, um, your forensic evidence. And they fucked up on all of that. They, they screwed up on all of that. So if you believe that the McCann's had something to do with it, what are we also... So not only did they kill their daughter they also got bloody lucky that the portuguese police were shit because they didn't do any of those three things that is not in dispute they did not do any of those things the crime scene was left for anybody to come in and out of they didn't do a significant witness trawl they didn't do significant dna swipes or anything like that it, it was a, it was a joke from the start so there is a lot wrong with that case a lot wrong with that case but we're all going to have our opinions and that's what i want to talk about so let's get into this uh so sophie says my point if the parents were on the dole would they not had their other kids taken from them didn't they neglect them by leaving them there alone is it because they have money well this is a very very good point from sophie and a lot of people have said this and i'm not i totally agree with you you know for anybody who's not seen the documentary i suggest you watch it with an open mind and i would always say watch it with the mindset that makes our country great our law system's great, innocent until proven guilty. And if you can show me any evidence that they're guilty, I will, le I will read it. But I don't like the fact that people go out there publicly going, oh, the fucking parents did it, this, that, and the other. No, you, you shouldn't be doing that. You haven't got the evidence and you cannot do that on a hunch because what, if, well, you can do, you can do what you like, but what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? What if, what if they had nothing to do with it? And you're there going, they did, they did, they did. But Sophie's right and a lot of people are right and it gets a lot of people angry, this does. The way Madeline has had all this exposure and other kids haven't, you know, I understand that. That's, you know, why is that? You know, all the money that's got pumped into that case, why is that? You know, why is that? And most importantly of all, they if you watch what happened, you've got a tapas bar here. To get back to the apartment, you've got to walk out onto a main road about 50 metres to the apartment where, which is off just off the main road, and they've left the patio door open. So... And, they've, and whilst they're eating, oh, like they're checking them every 20 minutes, but you know, that's a long way to get to your apartment and it wasn't inside. It is neglect. It is neglectful. They, they have neglected their kids there. I'm sorry. And I think a lot of people have very little sympathy for them over that one. And, you know, there was another two kids in there that weren't taken. But what I would say again is because they, because they were foolish to leave their kids un, 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 alone, does that mean that they're at fault for the... Well, let me word it. Does that mean that they're guilty of their child being abducted and murdered or abducted and sold off? No, of course it doesn't. No, they had never... At best, they were negligent and they were lazy. Doesn't make them the murderer of their child. So they're two separate things. I agree. I 100% agree. I would never do it. Never do it. Never do it in a million years. Um, for many reasons, really. Um, you know... 
what I'm like with my kids is I'm overprotective because my brother, who I never met because he, he died a year before me of cot death, which is um, sudden infant syndrome, I think. It's like where they go to bed at night and they just don't wake up. So I've always had monitors for my kids. Even when we go abroad, I'll get the adapters in, you put the monitor underneath the bed, and if they stop breathing, the monitor will go off. Now, that wouldn't have helped Madeleine McCann because the, the abductor, if it was an abductor, would see the monitor and unplug it and just take the kids. So the monitor would never go off. But um, yeah, I, I don't I, I don't know how anybody, but they weren't the only ones who did that. Everyone at the tapas table was doing it. So, you know, um, the mask scene actually creeps me out, says uh, Zyke Zaney. You know what, Zyke? Not a lot of not not a lot of things scare me, right? But last night I was watching the last episode of the documentary. It's an eight parter, right? And they talk about this is really interesting that in the area of Prado de Luz in Portugal, over the previous five years, there'd been a number of um, sexual uh, predator events in that area. One of which, um, or two of which, actually, um, a man had been seen in a villa. Um, with one of the children and one of them actually got into bed with one of the children with a mask on and they did a recreation of it and I'm watching it in bed on my own everyone's asleep and it's about midnight and I'm like oh, fucking hell I'm going to have to turn the light on it, it was very very scary um, thought that that was mild Marcus sorry his mate calling the McCann's murderers is okay that never mind the money they had they just happened to go on an area known okay I'm trying to read some of your comments here we've had a good contribution here from MUFC Archie he says it is proven that the parents had drugged Madeline and the twins because the twins didn't wake up throughout the whole thing without waking so I think they overdosed her panicked and hid her you see this that's a good point Archie Can I, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be even handed on this it isn't proven that they sedated the children. It isn't. There's no evidence of it. So I'm not saying you're wrong, but it's another myth that floats around it. A lot of people use the dogs. Oh, the dogs found DNA. Yeah, it wasn't the DNA of Madeline. You know, so there's a lot of myths floating out there. And you must always remember this. The Portuguese police, um, the head of that police, has lost a case against the McCanns for what he did wrote in his book. And... Whatever, whatever you want to say, look, If you, you may have a hunch, you may, you may think the McCanns did it right, but you cannot dispute the fact that the Portuguese police were um, bad at best and bordering on sometimes corrupt and may well have spent a lot of time looking at a certain line of inquiry to, um, to suit their, their inept uh, investigation. And there is also something in the documentary about a previous investigation they'd had, which looked very, very dodgy. Um, and the Portuguese police is very different to the UK police. It's very different to most European police forces. But the interesting thing about the overdose thing is that he, Archie is right. The kids, the other two kids in the room, the, the twins who were a little bit younger. Johnny Messias has marked the parents of paedophiles. Again, show me the evidence of that, Johnny. Maybe you've got the evidence. I, I, I mean, it's your it's your uh, it's your show as much as mine here. But again, are you throwing out myths or are you throwing out evidence? Evidence is what solves the case. Myths just um, muddy the waters. Um, myths and rumors, sorry. But in relation to the sedation, it's not been proved that they sedated their kids. However, however, around that time there was something called Calpol Night. Now, if you've got kids you'll know full well what Calpol is. It's a bit of a saver. If your kids gets a sniffle or a high temperature or anything, give them a bit of Calpol, half an hour later, they're feeling better. They used to have something called Calpol Night, which um, you used to give to your kids at night, obviously. Um, and some parents, it was rumored, used to give them that to make them sleep well, even when they weren't ill. And of course, there is this theory that maybe the parents had given them some of this cowpole night or whatever or sedated them to make them sleep well and it had gone wrong because they were doctors and they'd administered too much to Madeline and she died and they have to dispose of the body. Look, it's a theory. It's a theory. It's not far-fetched. It could have happened. But I go back to what I said before. Where's the evidence of it happening? Why are people so convinced they did it? And why are people so vile about it on social media saying, oh, they did it, they did it, they did it. Can you not see what I'm saying? I'm not saying they didn't do it or they did do it. But I'm saying, do we not live in a society where you're innocent until you're proven guilty? Do we, do we now trial people on a hunch? Do we now say somebody's done something because we've got a feeling? I mean, who are we? Mystic Meg. Deal with the evidence. If they get done in a few years time because they did do it, you can all pat yourself on the back and say, I had a feeling. But you can't say they did it based on myth. And actually, you know what? The kids, 
when they found when when, when it was discovered that Madeline McCann had gone dis, uh, disappeared, loads of people were coming in and out of the room, and the twins didn't wake up. Now I've got Sebastian's only coming up for two years of age, so he'd be the same age as those twins at that time. I tell you what, if you move the door funny in his room, he's up, going, "What the hell's going on?" Screaming and shouting. So twenty people coming in and out, screaming about Madeline going, and the kids stay asleep. That is weird. But here's another theory for you. What if? What if? The abductors, and I always do that because I don't know whether they were abducted. She was abducted. But what if the abductors, um, considering you've got to get a three, uh, Madeline was four at the time. So it's not just as simple as getting yourself into a room and taking her. It's taking her out of the room and taking her wherever you want to take her to. What if she wakes up and realises you're not mummy or daddy and starts screaming? Well, would it not make sense for an abductor to sedate the kids themselves? And maybe they did that. So, you know, interesting. The thing about investigation is I don't believe in, I never did believe in coincidence as an invest, any good investigator doesn't believe in coincidence. So if you, and and that's always a good mythology, mythology to have when it comes to investigation, you don't believe in coincidence because if you start believing in that, you're lost. Um, But you've got to believe in evidence. Well, if they did it, what was the motive says Adachia Bancoli? Well, I'd go back to what Archie said there. I think if the if the if the parents were involved it had to be accidental it had to be something that had gone wrong um their social class careers affected this case massively to said am why was it so publicized unfortunately lots of kids go missing says neil howes i would agree with that i have seen the documentary joe that's why i'm doing it um i'm very interested i, I mean i wasn't going to do this tonight because i'm doing the united stand in about half an hour but um, I saw that the True Geordie's doing a video on it tomorrow, and I'm going to be very interested to see what he's got to say. Um, and I don't have to agree with what he says, but I, I look, I, I'm, you know me, I am absolutely the bastion. You know, I'll, I'll get a flag up for free, you know, for opinion. I love different people having different opinions, and I'm never going to tell anybody that that they shouldn't do that. But I will certainly look at someone's opinion and say, well. I don't agree with that. And where is your evidence? And if someone shows me the evidence, I'm there to be converted. But as I keep saying to you, are the parents innocent? Well, in my eyes, they're innocent. They're innocent because because of the law, not because I didn't believe they don't do it. They didn't do it. But I think there's three or four things that could have happened to Madeleine McCann. One of them is the parents were involved, and I totally understand that your first line of inquiry is always to look at the in any murder in any murder. Your first line of inquiry is to look at the people closest to them because the percentage of murders committed by people who know them is massive. So that is exactly the thing that should have happened after there. But it shouldn't have been the only line of inquiry because you fucked up everything else. You fucked up your scene. You fucked up the forensic. You fucked up the witnesses. I mean, the tapas, basically what happened is there was a load of friends at the tapas bar eating, going around, checking their kids every 20 minutes. One of the friends was walking up the road about 20 minutes before Madeleine McCann was supposed to be taken. They saw a man carrying a child like that. Straight away you think, bloody hell, it wasn't the parents. But it's been more or less proven that the person carrying the baby was somebody carrying their child home from the creche. And and they've come forward and said that. So there's, there's interesting things. There is interesting things. Maybe look at other documentaries on this subject rather than the McCann propaganda pieces, was Aldo. Well, again, I have looked at a lot of things because... Well, I can't say too much about how I know a lot about it, but I have looked at a lot of things over the years. And the documentary, to be honest with you, you're right, it didn't go into certain areas that it should have done. There were still things around suspicions, around somebody by the name of Payne, that's all I'm going to say. He was a close friend of the McCanns who had made uh, odd remarks about Madeleine McCann, not mentioned in the documentary. So I agree, you should, but that, that is life. You don't watch a documentary made by a TV company and go, everything in there is great. Of course there are other things. But the reality is the McCanns didn't want that documentary to be made either. See, Ryan Griffiths says they're guilty 100%. It's comments like that that uh, that make make me very sad. Not because I think that they're innocent, but because it makes me sad that society will say that somebody's 100% guilty with fuck all evidence. You know, you haven't got the evidence. You've got a hunch. And I I think, you know, one day you might find yourself with a lot of people saying you did something and you didn't do it. And the shoe might be on the other foot. And you will be screaming, I'm innocent until you prove I'm guilty. And I am am innocent. And and that is very, very important. And I, I, I stand by that. I stand by that. And as I said before on a previous show, 
just because you're innocent, just because you've not been found guilty doesn't mean you're innocent. You know, people go to court and get found not guilty. It doesn't mean that they're not guilty. It just means that the investigation doesn't have enough evidence to convict. So there are different levels of things. There are. There are. You got it. I think you need to keep an open mind on things. I do, but it's your opinion to do things. But the only thing I found, the only thing I found distasteful, because what I fear. Look, I'll give you a hunch, right? My hunch is this: she she's dead, and she was dead within an hour of her being found missing. And me, and if the parents did it, probably before. But if she was abducted, certainly afterwards. She's got a very distinctive eye. Her, her pupil bleeds um, down and whoever abducted her, as soon as they saw that, whether they wanted to sell her or whether whatever they were going to do, they would, have just, they would have killed her because she would have been identified too easy if they'd sold her or something like that. So that is my hunch, but that's not evidence. That's not, I could never say I'm 100% about that. That's my hunch. Um, and I think this case, more than anything I've ever seen, evokes such passion about, oh, they definitely did it. I mean, I saw DT tweeting about it the other day. Oh, the parents definitely did it. And I thought, oh my God, mate, you are, you have got so many followers, so many followers, and you are saying stuff like that. And, but that's just my opinion on it. That's just my opinion on it. Um, I just, I just think it's very important, very important that we do try to adhere to the laws of the land. And that is innocent till proven guilty. Um, and people can disagree with me because that's what, you know, we're, we're in a mess as a country with this whole Brexit thing split down the middle. But I just think, you know, what if one day Madeleine McCann is found and all you lot, and some of you won't be like that, but some of you will, all you lot going, they definitely 100% did it, did it. You're going to look really, really stupid, really stupid. I don't think that's going to happen, by the way. If it was accidental death, why hide it, says Adachia Bancoli. People panic, people panic. But if you say an accidental death, why not say the parents sold her because they wanted a bigger house? Maybe they found a local paedophile and sold her for 30 grand because they wanted a conservatory extension. You know, there's as much evidence as that as there is of anything else. You know what I mean? You know, why, why can't old, um, why can't the aliens from Alien Resurrection come down and take her? You know, there's as much evidence as that as anything else. The, the case is ultimately screwed because the investigation was a joke, an absolute joke. Mark, thoughts about Shamima Begum's return? Not talking about that. So, let's take some of yours. They, they missed so much crucial stuff out and filled time with utter waffle, says James Glonek, 100%. Um, agree with all your points. A lot of why questions raised. However, why wouldn't they participate, participate in recreating the scenario? Also, regarding the driveway, why wouldn't they ensure it was searched? David Morgan, very good points. You know what? There's a lot of suspicion about them because some of their actions were strange. Um, you know, it became a very big PR thing. They employed PR specialists and things like that. And look, there's, everybody's different. I, I looked at it and I thought, when I watched it, I thought, you know what? His Scottish accent doesn't help. The Scottish accent at times can come across as very cold and very harsh. I thought, you know, if he was from Manchester or he was from Essex, would people have been more sympathetic? Yes, I think they would have done. I don't think his accent helped him. I really don't. With regards to her, she's quite stern face and the Scouse accent's a little bit serious. You know, again, if she'd have been a little bit tubbier with a, with a warmer face and a Yorkshire accent, would we have been more sympathetic? Those things do matter. People do judge people on first appearance on how they sound and 100%, 100%. You know, I, 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 the first few episodes, I was like, I think it was them. I was thinking them. But then I started to think, why am I thinking it was them? And by episode four and five, I was thinking, you know what? I still think it's them, but there's a lot of here. There's a lot in here that makes that, that should be pushing me in another direction, but I still have suspicions about them. Why is that? Is it because of the stuff that was fed out by the Portuguese police? I mean, there's journalists in Portugal who were going in on the McCanns and then realised they'd been lied to. What is not in dispute is that the Portuguese police released information to the press that the DNA that they had found in the flat was Madeleine McCann's and that did cause a lot of untold damage that could never be retrieved in relation to people thinking the McCann's had done it and that DNA report said nothing of the sort it didn't say that at all it didn't say it was Madeleine McCann's but they put that information out there so 
people get brainwashed and some people don't want to change their mind about it. But it's a massively, massively interesting thing. And I, I just think, as I said, um, there is something sinister about it. Very sinister. Uh, the thing that I struggle to get past, and you can make your mind up about this, I'm not saying it's the parents, I'm not saying it's an abductor, and I'm not saying it's aliens, but what I would say is, you're telling me that the parents and another family of friends are all leaving their kids while they go and have something to eat, and around half past nine on that night in late April 2007, um, they go to check on one of the kids, and they're not there, and nobody sees the kid be taken, and nobody sees, uh, finds any evidence of the kid forensically, and nobody ever finds the body, and nobody ever sees anything about it, and there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. There's a few sort of sightings of people acting suspicious in and around the area in the days before, or even in the hours afterwards, but there's nothing. Nobody saw it. Nobody, and, and, and not only did nobody see the abduction, nobody saw the McCanns take a body out. Nobody saw anything suspicious around that. It's just weird. You know what I said to my wife? That nobody, I'm sure the information's out there, but the most important question that came out to me from all of this is this. Who was the last independent witness to see that child alive? And when I say independent witness, not one of their friends in the tapas bar, a hotel worker, somebody from another flat, one of the crash runners, who was the last person to see her alive? Because that would have been the first question I would have wanted answering. And that's the first thing I would have liked to have seen in the documentary. Who was the first, last person to see her alive? Was it seven o'clock that night when she was coming in off the beach? Was it midday when she was in the holiday club? Was it four o'clock in the afternoon when she was swimming in the pool? Who independently saw that child alive last? Because we all assume she was tucked up in bed. She was tucked up in bed at nine o'clock. But... Who was the last person independently who saw that child alive? Because, and that, that won't help your theory that it was the parents. But I don't have that, I don't have that answer. I don't have that answer. What about the time? Could she have been dead a lot earlier? Well, Umberto Palatin, exactly, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say. But what I will always keep saying is, you can believe what you want to believe. I think it's wrong to publicly say the parents did it when you haven't got the evidence and you're just operating off a hunch. But I can't tell you what to do your opinion and as I said I have a family member I'm not going to name them who put stuff out on Facebook about them saying they definitely did it and I just say I just I cannot believe that you're not getting a birthday or Christmas present but um you know I'm not I'm not I'm not somebody here to suppress somebody's opinion I can I'll only just give you mine and, and I respect yours but whatever you think about what the parents involvement was you cannot move away from the fact that also if they did do it they were very lucky that the Portuguese police were incompetent because they fucked up they fucked up big time. But you know what? I'll paint I'll I'll tell you a story here. If you if you like hunches, I'll tell you a story. If that child hadn't been seen by anybody independently after seven o'clock at night, she didn't get reported missing till half past nine at night. That would give you two and a half hours to clean that flat, remove the body, put it somewhere else, um, go out for dinner. You know, I I'm really disappointed, and I'm sure the information's out there, but I'm really disappointed that the documentary did not say who independently saw the McCanns and Madeleine McCann the last time, because it you could clean that flat up, you could move that body before half past nine. There's a lot of things that can happen in two hours, one hour, but I don't know that, and I don't have that information. Um, Alex Marmon says, what is suspicious is the fact that no adult from the group was prepared to look after the young children in the ho hotel room or take turns to do so. Well, also, the guy who was walking home holding the child was later identified as somebody who was collecting their child from the crash at the hotel complex they were at. Because the hotel complex actually had a night crash where kids could be left so parents went out for something to eat. Um, and the McCanns and their friends chose not to use that night crash. Now, whether that was to save money or what, I don't know. Um, but you're going back to what Sophie was saying there, that the reality is that, you know, there are question marks around the neglect. Do I think the truth will ever be found, Curry? Very, very important question. You know what? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think we're ever going to know. I really don't. Because in America, 
there are cases where kids have been missing for 10, 20 years and they turn up. But I think Madeleine McCann's dead. And she's been dead for 12 years and no one's found the body. So I don't think anyone's going to ever find the body. And I don't think without finding the body, you'll ever find out what happened. So what's going to happen? Somebody's going to have to confess or somebody who knows what happened is going to have to confess. And why, if they've stayed quiet for 12 years, why would they change their mind now? So I don't think we're ever going to know. I don't. It's really sad. But you know what? Even off the top of my head, I know of another case, Ben Needham in Greece in, I think it was the 80s. Um, grandma and granddad were, I think, renovating a villa. Their daughter had gone over where, there with Ben. I think she was working. Um, the child just wandered off and never got found. Um, there was They dug up some land outside the villa thinking that there was some building work going on and somebody had accidentally knocked him in and buried him or something like, you know, and, and they've never found him as well. So there are lots of cases around this, not just, you know, there's loads around the world, but there are also UK. It doesn't get anywhere near the attention. Um, and I think he was younger than Madeleine McCann as well. Um, but the thing about the Madeleine McCann thing is because of the mistakes, because of the parents' actions, because of the lack of evidence, it is a conspiracy theorist's wet dream. It really is. When you don't have... When you have mystery, you get conspiracy. And everybody wants to be... Everyone wants to be a detective. Everyone wants to be a detective. It's why I became one, because I wanted to be one. And everyone wants to be one, and everyone wants to feel... There's nothing greater in the world, and I've done it, there's nothing greater in the world than solving a case and closing it and knowing that you solved it with very little evidence. So that's a buzz. And a lot of people want to do that with this case. And I don't blame them. But the reality is looking at it I can get wrapped up in opinion and excitement and emotion and have an opinion on it but but my professional head comes back to the fact there isn't evidence there isn't evidence to be firm on anything other than a hunch and you know it's like watching a thriller on the telly but we're not watching a thriller on the telly a little girl is probably dead and has been a, you know missing for 12 years and real parents have lost that child. Um, okay, some people would say, well, they know what happened, they did it. But what if they didn't? What if they didn't? And we're playing with real lives. And I just think, you know, compassion's very important. Compassion's imp very important. And if they haven't done it, and that was you, how would you feel? How would you feel? And if they did do it, and they do get found guilty of doing it at some point, then you can all go, I always thought it was. But if they didn't do it and people are there going, oh, you know, they did it, they did it, they did it. What a bunch of bastards that makes everybody who said that. So I just think don't sink to the level of what you think they are. Compassion's very important. Hope's very important. And But I don't think we're ever going to find out. I don't think we'll ever find out, no. And, and that's very, very sad. Um, Illa says, good show. I've, I've really enjoyed it. We'll have to do more of this. Make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. Um, why is there no camera footage from the hotel, says Mr. Best? I mean, I, I can't answer these questions. I mean, I was very fortunate that I worked in Birmingham City Centre and you could solve a lot of cases on CCTV. I think I said it on a previous show. We had quite a nasty one on the edge of Birmingham where there was no CCTV. But a car, a quite distinctive car had been spotted leaving the scene and it had a double sun uh, it had a double sunroof it had two sunroofs on the top so i knew it was this people wagon straight away silver and i got i picked it up on a cctv camera about two miles away and tracked it all the way to the motorway for about 10 miles and then on the motorway you've got your vehicle registration plate recognition and we got it off that um that was very satisfying but if you haven't got cctv if you haven't got cctv in 2007 in Portuguese holiday town, there's probably not a lot of CCTV. But having said that, there probably was some. Mark now thinks we are bad people for accusing the cans who took 11 million from the public, says Nathaniel James. I didn't say that. I didn't say that, Nathaniel. I didn't say that, and I haven't said that. Um, it's up to everybody. It's up to everybody to make their own um, minds up. Um, I can only give you my opinion. In Kate's book, it says she had perfect genitals. Says Riley MC. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's odd. Does that mean she did it? It could be an indication that there is something odd. But again, you can't convict on a hunch. You can't say they did it on a hunch. And I know of a lot of people who are guilty of crimes who are walking around free and they've never, they'll never go to prison for it because the evidence isn't there. You know, you can, you, can, you can commit the perfect crime. And I would never say, I would never say that the McCanns to- uh, haven't done, uh, you know, definitely didn't do it. I can't say that. I also can't say that she definitely wasn't abducted for the same reason. There's not, the, the evidence isn't there. Um, and there are people who have killed people and a lot worse and they're walking around free because they got away with it, uh, because of mistakes, or they got away with it because there was no evidential trail to track them down. Um, that's the cold, harsh fact that some people don't want to listen to. Lots of crimes go un, uh, undetected. Uh, you and Patterson, I just want to know what happened and why. And the reason we want to know what happened and why is for exactly what somebody was just saying there, and a lot of you have said, that... So much attention has been put on this. So much money has been spent on this that we all feel engaged in it and that we want an answer to it. And, and I totally get that. Uh, Paul Michael Bales says, not saying it is, but what if the whole thing is a hoax and the McCanns are just actors on a stage? I read, I read this, Paul. I read this the other, last night, actually. I was looking at the top five theories. Obviously, the parents did it is one, accidentally. Abductor is a sexual predator and murdered is two um abducted to order to to a rich family who couldn't have kids was three the mccanns are actors and it's all a big hoax to make money for the government it was four so you know i think aliens was in at five um helen salive jill dando who killed jill dando jill dando used to present crime watch uk uh very nice woman crime watch uk in the uk she was the presenter. Someone walked up to her and shot her in the head on the street. A woman of about 40, a presenter for the BBC. They just walked up to her and shot her dead in the street and nobody knows who did it. And there's theories about that. Organised crime group, hitman, whatever. Pro- maybe, maybe, or maybe it was just somebody who got lucky. If you don't have the evidence, you don't have the evidence. I think Veronica Gerwin as well. Very good video with, very good film with Kate Blanchett in it. She was a Dublin journalist. Uh, she was shot and killed as well. Loads of it. And it always, always is very interesting. Um, I've got to go and do the United Stand at half seven. Wizaldo said, had Kate, Kate been interviewed alone, she would have told the truth. But for some reason, they let Jerry stay in the interview room with her. Well, that's not true. She was interviewed by the Portuguese police for about 11 hours on her own. So, again, there's myth. There's rumour and there's truth. And there are weird actions from the parents. I don't I don't dispute that. But it's all about opinion. It's all about opinion. But I do the reason I the reason I, I, I did this video is because I wanted to sort of get across that what if. It's the what ifs. That that's all you know, I deal I, I deal in evidence in this sort of thing and Show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. If you want... I'm surprised nobody's asked it. I'm surprised nobody's asked it. If you had to go with your hunch as to what happened, what would it be? And I don't think I've answered it. My hunch with this is... It would be dangerous for me to say. You know what it would be dangerous for me to say? Because, all right, I ain't bloody Piers Morgan. I haven't got the following he's got. But there are people who follow me. And I think I have a responsibility with that. And I'll talk about how crap Romelu Lukaku is for United. But I will not go out and say, look, if you're asking me what I really think, it was this. Because I, I, I think that's, that's the thing, isn't it? If you've got a massive following, and I'm not saying I have, and you say, I think this is what happens, then it's wrong. But you and Patterson, the thoughts on the sniffer dogs. The one thing that, again, there's two things from this case that I'm going to leave you with before I go and do the United stand. One... Where's the, if anybody can find this, please put it in the comments as well because I'll be checking back on the comments later and maybe we can talk about it again at some time because I've really enjoyed it and maybe we can do other other cases. But who was the last? Who was the independent? Who was the last independent witness to see Madeleine McCann alive? Not friends of the family. Who independently, whether they were a bloody pool attendant, somebody in the local shop, who was the last person to see her alive and at what time? I want to know that. I would want to know that. And two, the dog, not the DNA dog, one of the dogs 
was solely going to bark if it smelt cadaver, which is a dead body. And it did it twice. That is not evidence in itself to convict somebody, but it did do it. And it was sort of dismissed as, oh, you'd have to ask the dog why it did it. That That is a very highly trained dog and it did spark a dead body. Doesn't mean it was Madeleine McCann's, you know, a dead body odor can, can can survive for a very long time and there could have been another dead body in there but that that was something that i thought yeah but but there's the thing is because the investigation was handled so badly and because the portuguese police didn't really spend any time looking at anything else other than the, their theory that the parents did it there was probably hundreds and hundreds of other, other leads to look at um very very interesting and, and very very sad you know ultimately Ultimately, um, I think the most important thing is you can get angry about the parents leaving them. You can think the parents did it. You can think she was abducted. You can think that the Portuguese police were a joke. You can think that that too much money and time has been spent on this case when there, there are others. But the reality is, and I think the saddest thing of all, is that there is a little girl, an innocent little girl, who was four, who was taken from what she would have thought was a very secure and happy family and has been missing for 12 years. And some of the things that could have happened to her are just beyond worth thinking about. Um, and that's that's the bottom line. We can all be detectives. We can all have a theory. We can all throw out accusations. But the reality is that that poor little girl is, I think, probably dead, but certainly not in the happy surroundings that she went to sleep in. And, and that, that's just very sad. That's just very sad. As I said, it's not a film. It's not a film. And I think it's almost turned into a bit of a circus. It's not a film. It's, a re- it's real life with real people. Um, and I just think, I just think try and be good to each other. I do. I, I know that sounds really corny, but I think trying to be good and trying to be the right person is, is important because I, I mean, I saw something on some something today somebody filming on a new york subway of a of a of a of somebody kicking a grandma on on this subway and people are filming it filming it going oh 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 and they just let him walk off and i'm like 20 years ago he would have been rushed and beat the shit out for that i mean what's happening to society we're just becoming these pundits while real life happens around us filming things having opinion on things and i think it's just very very sad very sad but that's my opinion everyone else is going to have a very different opinion um but thanks everyone for watching lots of people watched it i'm going to be on the united stand now in about five minutes time so i'll see you on there um look ultimately as i started it with i don't think my opinion's any better than yours um and that's why i did it live that's why i do my podcast live because i like to interact and get other people's opinions and there's been some really good comments in there and if you've not watched live or you have watched live come back and put a you know a couple of paragraphs i don't care i'll read it i'll read everybody's opinion on this but Evidentially wise, if you think you've got something that I've not met, spoken about, about this, get it in the comments. I'll come back and have a read. I haven't got all the answers. And certainly I would love somebody. I mean, Adam Brown says the lie detector test. Exactly. Why wouldn't you do a lie, lie detector test? Um, but I would love somebody to tell me if the information's out there. When was the last time she was independently seen? Very important that. And I've never seen it said. Johnny M says, Mark, the final verdict. My final verdict is that... I don't think we'll ever know. And I don't have enough to comment on which way. I I don't personally have enough to go and hunch it. I don't. That's not how I've ever worked. I don't really like hunching things. And hunch means have a guess. And I don't think there's enough evidence to go either way. So I would just say because of that, I don't think we're ever going to know. And people are just going to have to live with it. Um, Thanks, everybody, for watching. And watch the documentary, do, and uh, get your own thoughts. And also, that's very important. Don't ever be scared to have your own opinion. As long you know, don't ever be scared to fight your own corner and have your own opinion. Because I could have just. It would have been very easy for me to say Madeline McCann parents guilty, and loads of people would have gone, "Yeah, that's great." But I thought, you know what? Let's go, Madeline McCann's parent is innocent because where's the evidence? And let's have a proper debate. So thanks, everybody. I don't hold anything against anybody who has a different opinion to me or agrees with me. So what? It's a debate, and we've had a debate, and, I've, and uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. And uh, I'm going to go and do the United Stand now. A uh, bit of a bit of bit of uh, relaxation and a bit of football. Uh, but thanks everyone for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And Luke Gill, no, I didn't do it. 
um, have an alibi. Thank you very much. Speak, see, we're joking about something now because that's what happens. It's been so long that things start to become funny. You know, Fred West, mass murderer, was burying his kids in lodges under under a step. It was only a few years before people start, you know, stand-up comedians were doing jokes about it. There's loads of jokes about Madeleine McCann. And that just shows you the, the passage of time. It's a long, long time. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, I'll see you on the United Stand in about five minutes if you're going to join me for that. And um, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I don't really do, I don't do football on here. But things like, things like this, I, I, I think um, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy uh, not, ne not necessarily this topic, but I enjoy the topics that we have. So thanks, everybody. I'll see you soon.